Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you here in the house of the Lord. And uh, it's particularly good to see, see, see Steve back in the house of the Lord, who is uh, in the hospital. We're so glad that you're doing better. He told me he's 95%. So we're going to continue to pray for the other 5% to be completely uh, healed in the name of Jesus. Also, we want to remember uh, uh, Ed Griggs' sister, who's going in for a quadruple bypass uh, tomorrow. And so let's uh, pray for her. Remind me of her name, Ed, again? Sandy. Sandy. So let's uh, remember Sandy in our prayers that the Lord will minister to her and uh, all will go well. I am delighted to be here because the Lord is here and you're here. And we've gathered together in the presence of the Lord to worship him. So I want to read you a psalm, Psalm 34. It says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness and let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all that they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. God is our heavenly father and he is our provider. And we are going to worship him with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength this morning. And so I invite you to join me in standing to your feet. And we're going to prepare to worship the Lord. And as you stand, would you just for just a moment, just say, Father, I commit my focus to you. I push aside everything that would compete with you this morning. And I choose to exalt the name of Jesus, not just with my mouth, but with my heart and with my life. Lord, we choose to constantly sing your praises, as David said. We're glad to do it here on a Sunday morning, but I pray that our song will be a lot longer than that and that we would echo, Lord, your praises on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and every day of our life, we will give you glory and honor for you paid the ultimate price for each one of us. And we're so thankful for your great love. Holy Spirit. Have your way in this meeting today. After all, we've gathered together to exalt the name of Jesus. May your will be done. And may you be pleased with everything that we sing and everything that we say and do. In the name and the authority of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship the Lord with everything that is within us today. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Let's shake it off this morning. Let's focus on the Lord. He is God. He is so gracious and good to us. If you came in weary this morning, I pray that you would dance and be free in the Lord. Yes. I'm coming back to the star where you found me. I'm coming back to your heart, and I surrender, take me, this is all I can bring. I'm coming back to the start, our God is freedom, and here we feel your heart. Your heart beat for us. Take me. This is all I can bring. You'll never, you'll never stop loving us. No matter how far we run. You'll never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting. Let the future begin. You'll never stop loving us. No 
no matter how far we run, you'll never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. Jesus, take me now, Lord. This is all I can bring. Take me. This is all I can bring. You'll never stop loving us. No matter how far we run, you'll never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. You'll never stop loving us. No matter how far we run, you'll never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. You'll never stop loving us. No matter how far we run, You'll never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. Oh, come on, church. Are you alive this morning? Because if you have Jesus in your heart, he gives you life this morning. Huh? You might be tired and weary in your physical body, huh? but Jesus gives you life this morning. And maybe you can't stand up and dance, but maybe in your soul, in your spirit, you can dance this morning. I feel alive. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's great dance floor. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's great dance floor. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's great dance floor. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's great dance floor. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's great dance floor. I feel alive. I come alive. I am alive on God's great dance floor. On God's great dance floor. Take me now, take me now. Take me. This is all I can bring. You'll never stop loving us. No matter how far we run. You never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. You'll never stop loving us, no matter how far we run. you never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. You'll never stop loving us, no matter how far we run. you never give up on us. All of heaven is shouting, let the future begin. Let the future begin. Yes! Come on! Today's a new day. Today's a new day. Hallelujah! Let the future begin today. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, that we can start over. Today, today you can start over. His mercies are new every morning. Today you can start over. It's a new beginning. And you know, if you forsook the Lord, if you walk away from him, he says, come on back because I never give up on you. My love is unfailing. I will go to the ends of the earth to get you back. I died for you while you were yet a sinner. I died for you. My blood washes you clean if you will accept me this morning hallelujah and you can be alive in your spirit this morning he's got new things for you hallelujah hallelujah you need to trust in him this morning he's got great things planned for you i know the plans i have for you say it the lord plans for a future and a hope not to harm you hallelujah but to prosper you to 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 prosper you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make 
me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. No precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Whoa, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he washed you. He washed you white as snow. Ha, look what the Lord has done. Woo. Daddy. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Each day is just the same. I'm going to praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Has he healed you this morning? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name, each day is just the same. Come on and praise him, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me just in time. Oh, I'm gonna praise his name, he say it's just the same. Come on and praise him, look what the Lord has done. Come on! Come on and praise him, look what the Lord has done. Come on! Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Yes. He's healed my body. Hallelujah. Ha. He's touched my mind. I am not the same. Hallelujah. Yes. He's washed us clean this morning. He is awesome. And he is wonderful. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, if you are in need of healing this morning... Our awesome God can heal you this morning. Maybe you're halfway healed this morning, but he can do 100%. Hallelujah. Maybe the doctors say, no, you got this, you got that. Hallelujah. But God says, nothing is impossible with me. Hallelujah. Nothing. What might be impossible with man, huh, is nothing impossible with the Lord. Huh. Oh, he has hope for us this morning because he's so awesome. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? Can you tell him you are awesome, God, and I need you. You are awesome. Yes. God, you are awesome in this place. You are awesome, God. Our God. Is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. 
our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God. You're an awesome God, you reign from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. One more time. Our God, you're an awesome God, you reign from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God. You're an awesome God, you reign from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God, you're an awesome God. Our God, you're an awesome God. Our God, you're an awesome God. Yes, he's awesome in this place. He's awesome in this place. If you could just... If anything is still distracting you, oh, just put it off. Just put it off and focus on the King of Kings. He's a majesty. He's majestic. Yeah. Here I am. Humble by your majesty, covered by your grace so free. Here I am, knowing I'm a sinful man, covered by the blood of the Lamb. I found the greatest love of all is mine. You lay down your life, the greatest sacrifice. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands, Majesty. 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 Forever I am changed by your. Here I am, Lord, here I am, humbled by your majesty. I'm empty, Lord, but alive in your hands. Here I am, here I am, here I am. Here I am. Humbled by the love that you give, forgiven so that I can forgive. And here I stand, knowing that I'm your desire. Sanctified by glory and fire. And now that I found the greatest love of all is mine. 
since you laid down your life, the greatest sacrifice. Majesty, Majesty, your grace is found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hand. Majesty. Majesty, forever I am changed by your love, in the presence of your majesty. Majesty. Oh, majesty, changed by your love, majesty, oh, we change, we change by your grace, majesty, majesty, your majesty. Oh, your majesty, we worship you, Lord. You're the one who changes us, the one who saved us, the one who called us, the one who chose us. Majesty, oh, changed by your love, majesty. Oh, let him change you by his love this morning. He's your majesty. There is grace, a never-ending grace for you in the presence of your majesty. 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 Your grace is from me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hand. Majesty. Majesty. Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Your majesty Oh majesty We're changed Majesty grace Lord it's your grace that causes us to want to turn from our sins to want to turn from our old ways hallelujah and to be like you it's your grace you know shall we continue shall we continue in sin that grace may abound May it never be. Lord, purify our hearts. So in your 
presence of your majesty, we were changed. That we're not the same even today. That we would leave this place with a purified heart and a renewed sense, Lord, to humble ourselves before you and to give you honor, <laughs> not just on Sunday or Wednesday, Lord, but every day that we would turn ourselves to you. That we would <laughs> wash our hands and purify our hearts in your presence. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy. Set up high for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set up high for you, my master, ready to do your will. Purify my heart. Purify my heart cleanse me from within and make me holy purify my heart cleanse me from my sin deep within refine a spot my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart. For you, my master, ready to do your will. Hallelujah, Jesus. Here I am, open arms, Lord. Draw me close to your heart. You're my life, you're my refuge, my delight, my delight in you. Here I am, open arms, Lord, draw me close to your heart, you're my life. You're my refuge, you're my delight, my delight is in you, my delight is in you, Lord, my delight is in you, in you, my delight is in you i'm satisfied in you i'm fulfilled in you i'm in love with you lord hallelujah there's none like you lord there's no love like you lord there's no love like your love. Hallelujah. 
No one can cleanse me, Lord, but you. No one can wash me clean but you. Lord, I'm satisfied in you. Lord, my life is in you. My hope is in you. You're my refuge. You're my refuge in the storm. No one can touch me there. No one can hurt me there. No weapons formed against me when I'm there can prosper. When the storm comes, my God, I hide in you. My refuge is in you. And I rise up again and soar on wings as eagles. My delight's in you. My delight's in you, Lord. Open arms you have. <laughs> You've got open arms for your people this morning, Lord. Because you're majestic and true. You're not a man that you should lie. Your grace is sufficient, Lord. Your majesty, ha, your majesty, you're majestic in this place. Oh, you're majestic in this place. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. You're my rock, my refuge. You're my rock, my refuge. so majestic you are so awesome you're so wonderful Lord oh if you feel the Lord nudging you this morning to come to these altars and just lay it all down again let him draw you close to his heart this morning oh don't hold back don't want don't worry about who's looking on or what people might think or why you come up to the altar just let him draw you to this place. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will surely lift you up. Ah, if you got something on your mind and a battle is raging in your life, come and submit to the Lord right here. The battle is won right here. As you humble yourself right here, say, here I am, Lord. I am empty handed. I got nothing left in me. I don't even have a fight left in me. Maybe you don't even have any money to pay your bills or you don't know how to deal with your situations at work or with your home or whatever it is. But if you say, here I am, Lord, here I stand, Lord, here I am waiting for you. He will surely lift you up. He will surely lift you up if you'd only humble yourself. Let's sing, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Humbled by your majesty. Covered by your grace so free. Knowing I'm a sinful man, but I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Let his blood heal you this morning. Take faith in what he's already done at the cross. Take faith. Take courage this morning. Can we do that again? Here I am, Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, draw us close to you, Lord. Maybe we can't come to you on our own. Maybe we need the nudging. 
Maybe we need your hand on our back pushing us, Lord, but you, you don't force us. You just bid us to come and you knock on the door of our heart. You knock on the door of our heart and you say, whoever will open the door, I will come in. But you don't push the door open. <laughs> so draw us close to you this morning, Lord. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will do. Cause nothing else could take your place. So feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you.
Father, your word says that not one of us would come close to you if your Holy Spirit had not drawn us. And I believe that every single person that is in this room this morning is here because your spirit drew them here. But Lord, you're not just interested in us being in this room. You're interested in our hearts being in your throne room. I pray this morning that the wind of your spirit will blow upon each and every one of us, Lord. That you will do something fresh in each one of our lives, our spirit, our minds. As we spend time with you, Lord, we know that your spirit can give us a whole new perspective. We can experience your power as we walk in faith and confidence in your word. I pray that you would seal in our hearts the reality that when we call, you do answer. That you hear our hearts cry. Thank you for that this morning. I pray by your Holy Spirit that you would continue to minister to every soul in this room, every spirit, every body, every mind, where restoration is needed. God, please bring it. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated this morning. I thank God for the many in this church who God has given gifts to, to serve in one way or another, to be able to exalt the name of Jesus. And uh, I'm grateful for uh, those who are gifted in music and in song and uh, leading the worship this morning, uh, Heidi and uh, Tony and Ozio are going to be joining as a second worship team and rotating with our other wonderful worship team, uh, Allie and Paris, as they lead us um, as well. And I'm just so thankful for the men and women who God has not only given talents to, but also who has, God has given a heart for worship. And that's more important than anything. There can be people who have great talents, but are in it for the wrong reasons. And I thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit through those that God has brought to this church to minister, not just in great playing and singing, but in a heart of worship. And so I want to thank the Lord for each one of our um, musicians and our song leaders. And I ask the Lord to richly bless each and every one of you as you serve him with your talents and your gifts for the glory of God. So let's give the Lord thanks for our worship teams and the, the gifts that God has given to them as they use them for his glory. I want to share with you that we're going to continue in the presence of the Lord this morning. Uh, we're just transitioning because I believe that the Lord wants to speak to us something from his word. And we're going to be taking some more time to seek the Lord um, towards the end of the service. But as we come up on Easter approaching us uh, here in the first Sunday in April, I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to invite people to come to church. Oftentimes, there are those who may not come to church except for special occasions, and Easter is one of those special occasions. And so seize the moment and invite people to come. We're going to have a very special dinner that's going to be held on Easter Sunday. And we invite the entire community to come on out, not only for a great meal, but to hear the word of God. That God loves them, that God cares for them. And he uh, sent his only son, Jesus, to die for them. So I encourage you to invite someone to come with you and to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, this time I want to invite my wife, who's going to share with you some of the goings on here at the church. God bless you this morning. What a great service, and praise God for his presence. You know, there's nothing like just surrendering to the Lord, no matter where you are, your seat or the altar, it doesn't matter, because it's really 
it's your heart that he wants. And uh, don't we want more of the heart of God? And just like my husband announced, um, Easter, God's heart is always for people, people that need to know the Lord, people that may be caught up in other religions and need to find that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so um, my announcements have to do a lot about Easter, but before Easter, which is in three more Sundays, um, the women of our church, Vineyard Assembly of God, were blessed to have Lee Griggs as our women's coordinator. Thank you, Lee, for all that you do. And we have an awesome special women's conference that we would love sincerely. I know it's Lee's heart, my heart, love to pack that church van full of ladies who are hungry for God and want to hear a word from God. Um, and that is Saturday, March 28th, Women's Conference Off-Island at a church in New Bedford. Um, Pastor Gayathri from India, involved in his Hinduism for decades until Jesus stepped into her life. Someone on a campus in, in my home country of Canada, she was late for a class, and someone just intercepted her and just happened to have a New Testament and gave her a New Testament. Like, that's just a snippet of the story of, of God drawing her bit by bit by bit. And that's what God does, is you're faithful to share the gospel, whether it be through a track or a Bible, your words, your life. May you just shine Jesus. But Pastor Guy, Guy a tree from India, but is now pastoring, co-pastoring a church here in Massachusetts with her husband, and they are actually part of our women's ministry love line this year. It's a church plant outside of Boston um, that needs uh, growth, and they need help uh, financially and prayer as well. But Pastor Guy is an awesome speaker, along with Tina Sorrell, our previous women's sectional rep. Uh, ladies, you won't want to miss it. There's, it's a fun time. It's not like you just sit and hear the speaker. Um, fellowship with one another. There's even um, uh, different ministries represented, different tables of different ministries, whether it be Women's Teen Challenge or the Amir House that, that we support it. So ladies, um, it's a low cost of $40, which includes registration, a healthy and delicious lunch and transportation, excluding the ticket for the boat. So $40 is the cost. It's due today. If you're not able to pay today, it's going to increase in price to $45 uh, beginning tomorrow on. So please, ladies, um, when you pay for the conference today, just check it off uh, on the tithe envelope, Women's Conference, $40, please. All right. On to our uh, Easter announcements, but before I get to that, uh, we had regularly scheduled a karaoke night and chili cook-off fundraiser for Operation Christmas Child, and we're actually going to post postpone that to April 17th. So that's just a little snippet, so you'll hear more about that in weeks to come. But can everyone say, he is risen? All right, I thought I'd do the announcements interactive because I don't want to always do all the talking. Um, who here likes to wake up bright and early? Be honest, raise your hand. And who here can't wait for the Easter sunrise service? Uh, listen, I think last year, honey, what time did you start at last Easter? Okay, I actually think it was a little bit earlier because I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can wake up at 5.30. Anyways, this year's sunrise is set for 6.48 a.m. in the morning. But sunrise service will begin at 6.45 so that you all can gather on the beach, at Bend in the Road in Egertown, and see the beautiful sunrise and rejoice that our Savior has risen. Following the Easter sunrise service at the beach, 11 o'clock, uh, we will be having our celebration service. Our resurrection service, as I like to call it, and dinner as well. And Christiana, could you please start the uh, sign-up sheet for our dinner? And we also need volunteers. We're going to get that started. Thank you, Christiana, for passing it. And you're signing up. Good girl. 
Wonderful. I hope money can make all that delicious food you're signing me up for. But she does like to sign up for the corn because she does good with that. So we invite everyone to participate. Bring enough food for、um, bring. Like I said, I've got all the different items that we need. You guys are the best、um, because you usually bring more than enough. And this year, we would like to invite members of our community to join us for our Easter dinner. And、um, I know the dinner is always great, but the best、uh, food is the spiritual food on that Sunday morning. So everyone gets to hear the gospel before dessert. Amen. And following the Easter service,、um, we're also thankful for Mrs. Donovo overseeing our Easter egg hunt、uh, for the little ones. Each age-appropriate Easter egg hunt. Thank you for all your time and effort. And I believe、um, Emily, thank you too for helping out with all those Easter eggs. And we would just like to simply ask you, as part of our family, to bring in、uh, wrapped candy. And also plastic Easter eggs. So starting next Sunday, we'll have that in the foyer, a nice basket. So we just ask for the donations. An insert. Did everyone get this orange insert?、Um, something we're also going to do this year is an Easter memorial garden, and we're going to decorate the church with beautiful Easter lilies. If you want to participate, I won't go over every single detail, but please.、Um, Just detach. Fill out the information. Detach. It's going to be a memorial garden.、Um, for example, I might do one.、Uh, my grandparents are both in heaven right now, so I might do one in、uh, remembrance of my grandmother and grandfather who both served the Lord and love and love God with all their hearts. So、uh, we just encourage you if you would like to、uh, donate, and you get to actually take your lilies that Easter Sunday morning.、Um, All proceeds、uh, will support our children's ministry missions, BGMC, which we just want to say thank you for giving. So I think that's enough talking this morning, and I'm ready to start talking to the kiddos. We're going to start a new series、uh, in the Book of Acts because we want our boys and girls to do extraordinary acts for God. So boys and girls, come on down to Lighthouse Kids Church. Adults take about ten seconds. Silence your cell phone. You speak Portuguese. Please see Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome back.、Um, please see Elizabeth, and she'd be happy to give you a translator system headphone thingy. So wonderful! It's wonderful to have you in the house of God. We welcome each and every one of you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you, sweetheart. And just、uh, one note for our members. For those of you who have nomination ballots, you're welcome to turn them in in the box on the back of the church to my right. It's great to be with you here today. Hopefully, you brought your Bibles to church. If you didn't, forgot it while you were leaving the house, we have one out for you in the foyer on the right, underneath the tables. You can grab one. Always get skilled in using the Word of God, and how can we do that without having it? So. Encourage you to pick one up. You got your iPhone, your iPad. That'll work as well.、Uh, let's allow the Word of God to get into our heart. And、uh, this morning, I I pray that the Holy Spirit will have His way in this service. How many of you want that? How many of you desire the Holy Spirit to do His work this morning? I want to preach, but I'm going to tell you the truth that if I preach and the Holy Spirit doesn't work, <clears throat> then we'll have a dead service this morning. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly, and He came to do that through the work. Of the Holy Spirit. After all, Jesus said it's important that I leave the earth because if I don't leave, I can't send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will not only be with you, but will be in you. And what an awesome thing that those of us who have committed our lives to Jesus have the very Spirit of the Living God living inside of us. Excited to share something with you from the Word of God, but before I do, I want to ask that the Lord will have His way this morning. Heavenly Father, I ask for Your anointing today. I need your wisdom and your guidance. I pray that you would move in a special way this morning. You would touch our hearts. You would touch our minds. I pray, God, that even as we give you our attention, Lord, that you would speak to us in a special way. I also pray, Lord, that as we give to you this morning of our offering and our tithes, that you would direct 
our giving. For your word says, Lord, that we are to be cheerful givers, not giving because of compulsion, but giving because of a heart that is generous. So guide us in our giving today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Almost skipped over our giving, so we're going to take a moment to do that. And uh, I'm going to ask Dominic to come on down and share what the Lord has laid on his heart. If the ushers could prepare to come forward. Always bless Dominic with what God has given you to share. And so let's prepare um, our hearts and our wallets for giving to the Lord today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And I usually like to uh, read something from our uh, through the Bible. So I'm just going to sidetrack a little bit because reading in the uh, New Testament, Jesus quotes a lot from the Old Testament, and I like to refer to what he quotes from sometimes. And uh, you read this, uh, you'll recognize uh, the uh, reference after I read it from Isaiah chapter. 56, uh, verses 7 and 8. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Lord God who gathers the outcast of Israel says, Yet I will gather to him others beside those who are gathered to him. I like that about that. It really emphasizes God's desire for the world to come to him. That that was the idea of Israel, to get people to come to the Lord. And I just want to talk about, like, and that's why we have missionaries that we send throughout the world to let people know that God wants them to be saved. There's a missionary, one of the most famous missionaries that we're going to celebrate this coming week, St. Patrick. A lot of people don't realize he was a missionary, not from Ireland, but to Ireland. He was actually born British around 390 AD as Maylin Sicklot. And he ended up in Ireland because... Irish pirates came to where he lived, kidnapped him, and made him a slave there in Ireland. Being raised in a Christian home while he was there as a slave, his faith grew. He would pray all day as he was a, a slave for a farmer out in the field. And the Lord let him go back to England about six years later, where he gathered and learned more about the Bible. And he had that calling just like, Paul had about going to the people that desired to hear the word. And he went back to Ireland to talk to the people there that used to be, in, he was enslaved to, where many, many were saved. And many were called because he had that call in that all nations and the Irish nation was to be called to know the Lord God. And that's why we even give at this time that people here on this island need to know about the Lord God that desires for them to come to him. And as the ushers come forward, we'll pray for today's offering. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you desire all nations, all people to come to you, even as we see in this church, O oh Lord, different races and different languages, O oh Lord, that you have gathered here, and we thank you, Lord. And we just pray, O oh Lord, that we also let our community know that you want them to come to you, O oh Lord. And even the missionaries that we support, O oh Lord, that the world may know that there is a God that loves them and sent their son to die for them. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. If you would please turn with me to Mark chapter 1. Mark, as you read through the various Gospels, you'll see that they each have different approaches, and they, and they were writing to particular audiences. Mark was a, uh, a writer 
who got right to the point. He wasn't, a, he wasn't interested in getting all of the details listed out more like Luke would have because Luke was a doctor. And when Luke was writing, he was writing as a doctor would, giving all the particular details. But Mark, as you'll notice, jumps right in. If you, if you look at chapter 1, for example, you'll see that it simply states that uh, talks about the good, this is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. It goes right in and skips over the whole birth of Jesus gets right to what needed, what needed to get done uh, as far as communication from when Jesus began uh, the first steps prior to his public ministry, his baptism, the temptation, talks about John the Baptist, and we go right on in. And then in verse 40, we get to, uh, this is only 40 verses into the book of Mark. Now we see, it says, a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus begging to be healed. If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Now, how many of you have ever prayed to God and said, Lord, if you are willing or if you want to, I know you're able to do it. If you want to, I know that you can do it. Now, that is faith, isn't it? Trusting the Lord, believing that he is able to do it for the Luke 137 says there is absolutely nothing that is impossible with God. Nothing's impossible with God. So it is definitely a step of faith to come and to say, Jesus, if you are willing, you can, you can heal me and make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, reached out and touched him. And he said these words, I am willing. I'm willing. Be healed. I am willing to be healed. In our lives, there are many things that we go through. And we believe in our head, in our mind, and in our heart that nothing is too hard for God. But I can say for myself that there are times when I have asked the Lord, Lord, if you're willing to do this, if it is your will. And we even have a, a term that we often say, Lord willing. And that's good because so much depends upon the will of God and not our own will. But it's important for us to know the things that God has already willed and the things that maybe we're not sure about. Part of your growth and my growth in God is coming to understand the things that God already wants to do. There are some things that God wants to wait on. There are some things that God works out in our lives, and he uses circumstances to grow us. The scripture tells us that all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So as much as you and I might like to get through this life scot-free and, and everything is fine with no problems, uh, that is not the will of God. Uh, God's will is that as we go through the problems, he will be with us. He will never leave us. The scripture tells us there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. That is his will. His will is that his love, his presence, his, uh, his power, his grace is going to be there with us no matter what we go through. So that is definitely his will. So we know that there are certain things that we may wish uh, we would get through in our natural selves without challenge. But God has said, no, you're not going to get through that with with uh, Scott Free, with no challenge, but I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. 
And so there are certain things that God wants us to get to know on what is his will, what is his desire, that we can ask him and know that not only is he able to do it, but he is willing to do it. The scripture tells us in the book of Peter that God is willing that no one should perish. Now, when we read that, we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is never going to reject anyone who comes to him and says, Jesus, would you please save my soul? Jesus is not going to say, well, let me think if that is my will or not. Never going to do that. Because it is automatically the character of God. The scripture says that anyone who comes to me, I will in no wise reject. That is a promise of God that you're not going to have any man or any woman come begging at the feet of Christ and say, God, would you please forgive me of my sins if you're willing to? And God in heaven go, now you, I'm not so sure about you. I'm not so sure. Let me think about that for a minute. No, God is never going to do that because he has already said, it is my will that no one perish. So in praying along those lines, we don't have to say, God, if it's your will, would you forgive me of my sins? Do we? We don't have to pray that. That's a tagline that we don't need to add to that prayer. Why? Because we already know that it's his will. And so your growth and my growth in God to be able to call out and claim the things that we know are his will. Start with coming to know what does God really want to do? Well, we know he wants to save people. But I believe he also wants to heal people. And I would go so far to take it from the statement to say, that God is able to heal anyone, anytime, anywhere. And I will take it a step further based upon what I see in the word of God. That God is willing to heal everyone. I believe that with all my heart. He is willing. I believe that when I ask God for healing, I don't need to say if it's your will. Now, let me explain that. Because I know of circumstances and situations of people that pray for a while, and it doesn't seem to come right away. Sometimes time can wear on us. And we can get worn down because the answer doesn't come right away. But that does not change the heart of God. It does not change the will of God. It does not change his desire. So when we come before the Lord and we ask him, Lord, would you please heal me? We can know that it is his will for us to be healed. For by his stripes, we were healed, not only in our spirit, but also in our body. That's why when Jesus got up out of the grave and he was resurrected and all that God was doing through his death and burial and resurrection, I would say that one of the greatest challenges, apart from uh, looking at people when they're going through all kinds of diseases and, and, and challenges, maybe you, you look at Ebola and how it's affecting so many people's lives, you Think about cancer. When someone gets the news, you've got cancer, and all of a sudden, uh, it's like a death sentence, uh, depending on the type of cancer, and, and all of these diseases that we can see in our world today. But, but how about the person who has already uh, died, and their body has already begun to turn to dust? Well, the scripture says that when uh, Jesus gave his life, that people came up out of their tombs and were resurrected back to life. And there is nothing that is too hard for the Lord. This body is simply a tent that you and I live in. And sometimes that tent isn't working all that well. You know, for various reasons. Sometimes it's old age. Other times it's because of 
things we bring on ourselves by the way that we treat ourselves, handle ourselves, the way we eat. Sometimes it's because of those things. Sometimes it's something totally out of our control, but we deal with these issues in this tent that we live in. But everywhere Jesus went, he healed people. He touched people and he ministered to them so that they could be restored to the way that he intended them to be. And in this particular scenario, there was no exception because this man came with leprosy and he said, Lord, if, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus said, I am willing, be healed. Verse 42 says, instantly the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. And he told him, he said, don't tell anyone about this. And said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Jesus wasn't uh, wanting there to be no public testimony. He was wanting the public testimony to be verified. And so he said, you go to the priest and you do what is necessary. You follow the process. If you got to go back to the doctor for another checkup, you go to the doctor for the checkup and you allow the doctor to proclaim the praises of the most high God to say, I cannot believe it. But what you once had, you no longer have. I don't have an understanding for it, but you are completely healed. That gives credence to the power of the living God, that it's not just mind over matter kind of thing where we're hoping that we're better and we're saying that we're better, but we're really not better. No, when God does something, he does it completely. He does it thoroughly. He's able to do whatever you need this morning. Some, some of you are facing challenges that we haven't seen completely resolved. And I've prayed with some of you, and I'm still believing God for 100% healing. And I haven't seen it yet, but I refuse to give up in the authority in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to get discouraged because we pray once or twice or three times or five or ten, and we don't see it happen yet. I'm not going to give up and begin to doubt and say, well, maybe, maybe God doesn't really want that person to be healed. I don't believe that. I believe it is God's heart and his desire. Otherwise, wherever Jesus went, when it says in the scripture, he healed everyone who came to him. He wasn't picking and choosing. Well, you, I'm going to heal you and heal you, but no, not you, but yes, you. Jesus ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit. And see, that's where it boils down to is, is what freedom is God given to be able to work? There were towns that literally did not give God the freedom to be able to work, and he couldn't go there and do miracles, not because he didn't want to. It's because he wasn't allowed to. And I, as pastor, I don't in any way want to keep God pushed aside in any way so that he is limited in what he can do in this church, in you, in me. And the big step that you and I have to take every single day is the step of faith to believe God for the impossible. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever your leprosy is, God is able, but he's also willing, and he wants to. He wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. And he wants God the Father to get glory from what happens in your life. As the man, but the man, it says, uh, went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. And as a result, large crowds soon gathered surrounding Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. Chapter 2, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. And soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head, and then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Now, your desire and my desire is based upon our 
first of all, our confidence in what can be done. Now, Jesus is in the middle of this room, and you can't get in. And they've got this man who is paralyzed, and this man needs desperately to be helped. Now, think about it for a moment. If you are in need of assistance, how much do you have to really believe to where you climb on the roof and you start taking off the shingles and you get your sawzall and you cut right through the joist in the ceiling large enough to where you can get a paralyzed man down. Now, yep, those little things that you get up in your attic, you know, they're about the size that you can stick a little dog up in there and you just kind of like squeeze them. I'm not talking about a hole like that because I don't think that this paralyzed man would have been able to maneuver very well. It says that they cut this hole in the roof so that they could lower this man down to Jesus. I'm not sure what the owner of the house was thinking. As he saw, the roof began to fall apart in front of his eyes. But the place was packed. And what you might read this story, and you've probably heard it many times before, but I want you to think about the reality. At what point do you climb the roof and get out the saw and start cutting? Thank you so much. I really need it. What do you think it takes to do something like that? Well, it takes determination, but it takes a firm belief that something's going to happen. My paralyzed friend, I believe so much that God desires to heal him that I believe cutting a hole in the roof is going to be worth it when it's all said and done. It's going to be worth it. It's minimal collateral damage compared to what God wants to do. And sometimes... The ego that you and I have represents the roof in our home. And God wants that ego to be broken through so that we can come before him with humility. That we're willing to break through the structure of what we might think looks very nice on the outside, but it is keeping us from access to the master. And sometimes it's easy for us to be able to want to approach God only in our own method. And to say, boy, I, 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 I'm, I've never approached the Lord a different way before. So if I can't get in the house, then it must mean that God never intended for me to get close to the master. And sometimes we can reason away our blessing and our miracle because we think, well, it must not be the will of God for me today. When all that God is looking for is for us to do whatever it takes to get in his presence. And if it takes crawling up on the roof and making a hole to get down to Jesus, I believe that if I can just get my friend to Jesus, something's going to happen. The owner of the house may be upset at me. I may have to pay a bill to have this thing rebuilt. But all of that is worth it if my friend can get healed. I may feel a little awkward. Everybody's staring at me. What are you doing? I'm back in the corner of the house. I can't get as close. What do you think you have the right to cut a hole in the roof and get close to Jesus? I wonder what people were thinking on that particular day. The scripture is very clear that not everybody was in sync with what Jesus was doing. There were people standing around with a frown on their face, wondering how can this man do these things? And in what authority do you do these things? And there was a heart that was not happy with people getting healed. But nevertheless, Jesus kept busy about his father's business. And he was busy ministering to those who were willing to break through their ego to be able to experience the presence of the living God. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If there's a barrier that you haven't broken through yet that is keeping you from the master, then you may never experience your healing until you're willing to take it and to start ripping it apart. 
and to say, God, until I experience your presence, all this stuff is useless. I give it all up to you. I humble myself before you. I don't care what anybody says in church. I don't care what people think about me. I am hungry and I'm thirsty for you, God. I want you to have your will in my body, my mind, my spirit. And when we begin to open our heart and humble ourselves before him, it's at that moment that Jesus is going to recognize our presence. Notice that they didn't say, well, I know that Jesus can touch me anywhere. So why would I want to go through all the trouble to make a hole in the roof and get down to the middle of where Jesus is? That wasn't their approach. They said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. And as they were doing what they needed to do, God was working things out. And it says, they lowered the man on, on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Verse 5, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. What did he see? He saw their faith. Well, how could he tell there was faith? Because there's a hole in the roof. What does James say? Faith without works is dead. Now you can say all day, I really love Jesus. I really want to be close to Jesus. But until you really take the effort to be able to get close to Jesus and not allow any barrier to stand in between you and him, then it's only words. It's only words. We've got to step out of our comfort zone and we need to come to Jesus. And we need to do whatever it takes to break through. And oftentimes that's our own ego. And we have to say, Jesus, I believe that you are able. And Jesus, seeing our faith, will say to us, like he said to this man, my child. Listen to these words. Now, what did they lower this man down for? I mean, this guy can't walk. What do you think they're hoping for? That, that he'd be healed, right? That he's going to get up and walk. And Jesus looks at the man and says, because of your faith, I say to you, my child, your sins are forgiven. Sins forgiven? That wasn't what I crawled through the roof for. <laughs> Oftentimes, your problems are not your real problems. They're just enough problem to get you to Jesus so that he can diagnose the real problem. Sometimes you're going through struggle. God, why do I have to go through this? God, why do I have to spend so long dealing with this issue? It's because I, I needed to talk to you about something else, my son. I needed you to have a doctor's visit so that I could tell you about something else that's quite a bit more problematic than what you think you have. I read a, a news story about a man who was assaulted, assaulted violently and injured pretty intensely. And so he had to go to the doctor. When the man went to the doctor, the doctor checked him out completely and found that there was a tumor that had begun and was growing in his head. And the doctor diagnosed him that within a very short period of time, he would lose his life. But he had no idea that the tumor was there at all until he was assaulted by some person that had damaged him, and only when he went into the doctor could the doctor say, we've diagnosed and found this tumor, and then they did surgery, took it out, saved his life. If he had not been assaulted, he may have never known what was going to take his life. Sometimes 
the issue that we're dealing with that causes us immediate pain, God uses to resolve an issue that is much greater. And so here comes the man down, and Jesus sees his faith, and he says, I'm going to deal with the real problem. Your sins are forgiven you. See, that's where the real issue is for every single one of us. As much as we may not like to admit it, but there are things in our lives that can sometimes have a hold of us. And the enemy sometimes gets a root, and it affects our bodies. That doesn't mean that every time that we get sick or every time that we get some kind of, of physical problem that it's directly tied to a disobedient act. But you and I must recognize that all of pain and suffering has come into this world through disobedience. Every bit of it. Before Adam and Eve made that wrong decision, there were no flus, no colds. None of this stuff. Because they were walking in obedience and they were covered with the protection of the Lord. So you and I live in this world. It's a fallen world. So how do we have protection? We walk before the Lord with a humble heart and we come before him and say, Lord, here I am. I need your healing. Jesus says to us, I'll deal with the real issue. And this real issue causes problems because it says in verse 6, some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And walk. Now, up to this point, there was... No outward healing evident. All that Jesus had said is your sins are forgiven. Now, when God speaks, do you think that he really means it? Absolutely. Do you think those uh, sins that the man had done were forgiven? Absolutely. And so here Jesus is. He has said something, but there's um, his, his muscles are still not working right. His nerves are still not processing properly. He is still a paralyzed, forgiven man. And so Jesus sees or he, he, he knows the thoughts of the people that are, that are thinking about what's going on. How can this man say your sins are forgiven? Only God can do that. Jesus said, well, I've got a question for you. Is it easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? And they probably would say, yeah, anybody could say that. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus said, but how about if I were to say to this man, stand up, pick up your mat and walk? What do you think about that? And so, verse 10 says, I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Verse 12, the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything done like this before. When Jesus did this miracle, he was focusing on something bigger than our human healing, the natural healing. He was saying, guys, for me to be able to heal a body is little compared to the healing of the soul. And if I can deal with the soul, I can deal with anything. If Jesus could come and he could heal your soul, he can heal your body, he can touch your mind, he can give you peace, he can restore things inside of you that need to be restored, he can replace your body parts, he can do anything because he is the creator of the universe. Jesus is able to do it. Over the weeks, the Lord has been impressing on my heart, and I've been praying, God, give me wisdom as for timing. But I believe that God wants part of my responsibility as your pastor is to open the door for the Spirit of God to work. That's part of my job. And when he works, he does amazing things. And that's my heart, is that the Lord will be able to move and to be able to work. 
I know some of you in this room are dealing with issues that are, that are private issues. Private issues of health that uh, maybe just you and God and the doctor know about. God knows about those issues. He cares about those issues. And God's able to touch you and he's able to heal you. Jesus saw their faith and he dealt with the sin. And then he said, all right, let me just take care of this this physical issue. And he healed them. I believe that Jesus wants to heal. And I, I want to give him opportunity to do that. And I see many of you in this room that I've prayed with before. And, and you've given testimony that things have progressed to the next level. That God has moved your percentage of healing from whatever, 30 to 50. Some of you are not complete yet. So why, why stop there? Now Joan shared her testimony about her feet, taking a step of faith. Look what you got. Look what you got on there, Joan. Regular shoes. Regular shoes. God cares about our soul and he cares about our body. And I, I care about your body because God cares about your body and he wants you well. When you're sick, that limits what you can do for the glory of God, doesn't it? I mean, as I, over the weeks, there was one particular time where almost every single one of my leadership was either missing or sick. And I was, th- I was praying. I said, Lord, you're the healer. You're the healer. And uh, so this is part of response to that. I want the Lord to be able to heal and to minister, to do what he wants to do. So I'd like to uh, ask Dwayne Vogt, if you could please join me up front. I would appreciate that. Dwayne is one of our deacons. And uh, we are going to take some time this morning to seek the Lord. And I'm going to invite the worship team to come on up at this time, please. Thank you. And what we're going to do is we're just going to open the door for the Lord. Say, Lord, here we are. The scripture says that the disciples went and anointed with oil, and they prayed for the sick, and they were healed. Do you believe that Jesus is able to do that? See, I'm not Jesus. None of us are Jesus, but we're his representatives. And so we represent him. We are called to preach his word. And then through the power of the Holy Spirit, he does the work. It's his work. So I want to invite you this morning, if you're dealing with any kind of illness, I want to invite you to come and to stand in a line here in the front, and we're going to pray for you. And we're simply going to ask Jesus to heal you. And if you have committed sins, it says this in the book of James, pray over those who are sick, and if they have committed sins, it will be forgiven them. So my prayer is that maybe maybe some attitudes, maybe... Maybe some things have brought on an illness. That's not always the case, but maybe particular issues in your life have opened the door for the enemy. We're going to come against that in the authority of Jesus Christ today so that you can be healed. All right? So we're going to do that this morning, and I I just want to also share with you, if you don't want to share what you've got going on in your body, you don't have to. It's between you and the Lord. After all, he's the healer. You say, Pastor, I need some prayer. It's okay. That's all you need to say. We'll pray for you. You want to tell us what it is? Feel free to do so, and we're going to lift it before the Lord. All right. So if you if you're here and you're you're on a time crunch and you've got something to go to and you need to leave the service, by all means you're welcome to do so. But I want to invite you, if you're willing, to stick around for a bit as we seek Jesus for His healing, because He is the one who provides it for us. So as the worship team leads us, I want to invite you just to come now. And to just come and, and, and form a line right here at the front. And we're going to simply pray for you. Believe God for a miracle. See what God does.
And I believe you're my healer. And I believe you are all I need. And I believe you're my portion. And I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk with me through fire and heal all my disease. I trust in you, Lord, I trust in you. And I believe you're my healer, and I believe you are all I need. As I believe, and I believe you're my portion, and I believe. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. For you, hmm. nothing is impossible for you. Nothing, Lord. Ha. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible nothing is impossible for you you hold my world in your hands nothing is impossible for you nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world in your hands. And I believe you're my healer. And I believe you are all I need. And I believe you're my portion. And I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough for me. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You walk with me through fire and heal all my disease. And I trust 
in you lord i trust in you and i believe you're my healer and i believe you are all i need And I believe you're my portion. And I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough for me. You're more than enough for me. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You're my healer. You're everything. You're all I need. You want to heal us. You want to heal us, Lord. You want to set us free. I believe. And I believe you want to. Set us free, Lord. Bring your healing, Holy God. Bring your healing down, down. And I believe you're my healer. I believe. You are all we need. And I believe you're our portion. And I believe you're more than enough for me. More than enough for me. More than enough for me. You want to heal your people, Lord. You want to heal us. You want to purify us. You want to touch us. You want to heal our minds. You want to heal our broken hearts. You want to heal our bodies, Lord. Oh, you're the healer. You said I am the God that healeth thee. You said I am the God who healeth thee. We believe, we believe. We believe, we believe, yes, you are, you are the healer, you died that we could be healed. By your stripes, we are healed. Yes, you're the God that healeth thee. You are the God who heals us, Lord. Nothing is impossible with you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. 
Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world in your hands. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible, Lord, impossible, here I am, here we are, Lord, waiting, <laughs> waiting for you, do your thing. Covered by your grace so free Here I am Knowing I'm a sinful man Covered by the blood of the Lamb now I found the greatest love of all is mine since you laid down your life, the greatest sacrifice. Majesty, majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hand. Majesty. Majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am In the presence of your majesty Here I am Humbled by the love that you give Forgiven so that I can forgive. Here I stand. 
knowing that I am your desire. Sanctified by glory and fire. Now I found the greatest love of all is mine since you laid down your life the greatest sacrifice majesty 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 your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Majesty. Majesty. Forever I am changed by your Forever changed, forever healed, forever changed, majesty. Forever changed, forever healed. Majesty. Majesty. Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Forever, forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Forever Forever, Lord, I'm changed by your love. Forever changed. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Majesty My majesty Majesty, oh majesty, oh majesty, forever I'm changed, I'm not the same anymore. Changed by your love, oh majesty, I'm not the same anymore, your majesty, oh majesty, oh majesty, yeah. you're the God that heals. You're the God that forgives. You're the God who cleanses my every stain. Your majesty, my majesty, 
your majesty. Your majesty. The great healer of my soul, my majesty. Forever changed. Forever changed. Yeah. Majesty. Your majesty, your majesty, forever changed, changed by your love, yeah, majesty, yeah. My majesty, my majesty, in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the flood, you're my majesty. In the midst of my storm, in my majesty, and I'm walking through deep waters, Lord, you're my majesty. You said you'd be with me, Lord, my majesty, yeah, I'm in the fire. I'm in the flood. You said I shall not be burned. I shall not drown. I'm in the midst of the floods and the fire. Yeah. You said fear not. I'm with you in the midst of the fire in the flood. Oh, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, in our majesty, I'm your majesty, I'm your king, I am your lord, I am your healer. I am everything you need me to be. I was with Meshach, Adrach, and Abednego. I was in the fire. As I was with them, I will be with you in the fire. You shall not be burned. Oh, you shall not be burned. I'm in the fire. You shall not be burned. You shall not be burned. You shall not drown in these afflictions. I'm the God who heals you. I'm the God who restores you. I'm the God who revives you. I got strength and I have power to revive you. To come alive, I make you alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord. 
Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. So worthy are you, Lord. You're the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. The Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. You're so holy. You're so holy, Lord. You're holy. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. You are holy. Worthy is a lamb. <laughs> Worthy is a lamb that was made. Wash me. He heals me. He wash me. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. I believe. <laughs> I believe. I believe in you. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. You wash me, Lord. You wash me clean. Wash me in your cleansing flood. You wash me. Hola, mas. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace, your grace is sufficient for my every need. I believe 
Your grace is enough for me. Hallelujah. You are the God who heals. You are the God who heals. I believe you're my healer. Nothing is too hard for you. And I There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you owe freely your sins to forgive? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Quando você sabe Jesus que ele anda, e o nome com ele poder, a poder sim, força sem igual. Pelo sangue de Jesus, a poder sim, força sem igual. Nesse sangue de Deus de Jesus, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Pass me now. O gentle free, a love, you are all, no God. How low 
in the world be you the best me now hey go can make me whole again nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. No precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace nothing but the blood of jesus this is all my righteousness nothing but the blood of jesus no precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other found i know nothing but the blood of jesus nothing but the blood of jesus 